This is the last flashy one. Yeah. <laughs> they ended this model in 16, so this is the last. This is a 16. This is the last year. Of the last year. one. Okay. Yeah, cool. They still make the 48. Yeah. You know what the 48 is yet? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bit different from the Roadster, for sure. So this is the Harley 72. It's wild. Well, at least I can see the speedometer on this thing. That's basically the only gauge I have. And a couple of idiot lights. This riding position is wacky. The forward controls are cool once I find them. I'm not cramped like I was on the Roadster. I'm not sold on the Mini Ape handlebars though. They definitely look cool. <laughs> but as far as ergonomics, this thing is not nearly as easy to control as the others are. Even the Limited I found easier to control than this. And that's a lot more bike. Well, I was complaining about the Limited being too insulated and not raw enough. This might even be a little too raw for me. This is the closest I've ever come to riding a true American chopper. This isn't a chopper, this is actually factory stock, believe it or not, right down to this crazy gold paint job. I mean, they call it the 72. This thing looks like it could have come right out of 1972 with its retro styling and crazy 70s colors. So this bike's very much about appearance and it's got that covered. It looks so cool. What about function? Well, like I said, I don't feel, I'm getting, I'm getting a better feel for it with practice, but these mini apes just don't really do it for me as far as control. I'm in control, but I just feel a little bit too insulated from what the bike's actually doing. I'm getting used to the forward controls just fine, but the seat, I mean, very basic seat. I wouldn't want to spend all day on it. And on top of that, it's very flat. When I get on the throttle, I feel like I'm getting pushed back. Yeah. See, even that little bit of throttle there, I'm kind of hanging onto the bars to keep myself from sliding too far. I didn't have that on any of the other bikes. I'm a little, not scared, but apprehensive at how it's going to feel on the highway. Yeah, see, I can cut through these curves here, but the Roadster felt a lot better doing that. It felt actually sporty. There's no sport whatsoever to this bike. This is pure, classic, basic Harley through and through. Yeah, this is what 55 feels like. <laughs> the highway is going to be uh, interesting. Go for it. I have no idea if you can hear me. This is definitely not comfortable on the highway. I don't feel like I have as much control as I'd like. I'm actually having a little trouble just staying in my lane position. The wind blast is crazy. And I'm doing 65, I'm actually sticking to the speed limit. Because I don't really feel like going any faster. Okay, I'm getting a little better feel for it, but I really don't want to go any faster than this. I got plenty of power left, but I don't trust my own ability to control the bike any faster. But I'll say one thing, I sure look cool cruising down the highway on this thing. It would be a hit at any bike night.
brakes are good, which is good. You're going to want those on this thing. Let's see how well this merges. Once again, all the torque you'd expect from a Harley V-Twin. Despite what you may think for my shadow being on the loud side, I'm not a fan of loud pipes. It just happened to come with them. However, a bike this loud visually needs to have some straight pipes. Yeah, I'll give the 72 11 points out of 10 for style, looks, and general badassery. As far as being your daily rider, well, there are reasons they made bikes like this in 72 and moved away from that. I mean, yes, despite its retro looks, this seems fuel injected, it has a proximity key, I mean, there's some modern Harley technology under here. But despite looking totally awesome on this thing, the ergonomics are all wrong for me. I'm not a fan of the Mini 8 bars. Even now I'm having to look for the forward controls, though I'd get used to that. I already am getting used to it a bit. Where the Roadster felt too cramped, this feels like the opposite extreme. All the controls are way too far out there, too far away. Something in between Goldilocks style would be just about right for me. Nice loud horn though. In fact, my leg leans against the horn when I'm riding. Now that I've gotten a better feel for it, I'm more comfortable with it in traffic. Although I still don't quite have as much control as I'd prefer. It's all about those bars, man. Nice signal. Still feel like I'm going to slide off the back of this seat if I give it too much power. Man, looking at my reflection in this truck tailgate. Just, ah, uh, me on one of these, it's ridiculous. You've seen my shadow, it's black and chrome. There isn't really anything flashy about it, and I like it like that. It's low profile. This is not low profile. And this tank is freaking tiny. I can't imagine what kind of range you get out of this. Like what, three miles? Probably have to fill it up again after this ride. Okay, bopping along at 25, 30 miles an hour. I'm comfortable with this speed. This is cool. I think that's pretty much what this bike was made to do. Forget, you know, a daily rider, a commuter, a tourer. Forget attacking the twisties. If we're just putting along at slow to medium speeds like this, this is where this bike really shines. Actually, no, where it shines is looking awesome. 